What if I told you all of this was once a tropical paradise? Did you know that Ireland used to be at the equator? Looking around at the Irish landscape where it can be cool even in the summer. We're here in August and I'm wearing this hat. It's hard to imagine that a place this far north on the globe was once at the equator. Millions of years ago, Ireland was baking under a tropical sun surrounded by coral reefs and ancient marine creatures. So how did it go from that to this? Today, we'll bring you on our journey to learn how Ireland transformed over millions of years from a tropical getaway to the green and rocky land we know today. Let's go on a time traveling adventure to check out the equatorial landscape. Let's go. So if Ireland was once like today's equator, what would it have looked like? Think of places like the Bahamas or the Great Barrier Reef. Warm, shallow seas, thriving marine life, and maybe even some volcanic islands. Now compare that to Ireland's cliffs, bogs, and rolling green hills, and you'll see it's an almost impossible transformation, right? Millions of years ago, Ireland wasn't this cool, rainy island. It was practically a scuba diving paradise. And the proof of this tropical past? It's hidden in some of Ireland's most famous landscapes. Places you may have walked right across without realizing you were stepping on the remains of an ancient ocean. That's right, the Burn and the Cliffs of Moher, two of Ireland's most stunning landscapes and the most biodiverse areas in the whole country, they're made of rock deposited during Ireland's tropical times. But even though they originated in the same period, they are starkly different landscapes. And there's an important reason why. It's important. Important enough for you to keep watching. Because you're going to want to know. Let's start with the Burren, an area of about 138 square miles, part of which is preserved as a national park. It's famous for its rugged, rocky terrain that stretches as far as the eye can see, and plant species so varied they include specimens from Arctic, Alpine, and Mediterranean climates. See this landscape behind me? It was formed millions of years ago in the Carboniferous period, where um, this part of Ireland was covered in an ancient ocean. And all that ocean water laid down all this limestone rock, made of fossils, not limes. And then at the end of the last ice age, all the ice age, all the ice age glaciers just <laughs> plowed it all across the land. That's how we got this landscape that you see today. It's not hard to imagine this ancient past when you look out at this modern landscape before you with long stretches of exposed limestone pavement. It all sort of looks like a seabed. But when you look closely, you'll see that over time, rainwater has carved the limestone into cracks and caves and sinkholes and really shaped this dramatic karst landscape that we see today. Every rock is limestone. But what about the glacier or lauratics? You know, the rocks the glaciers brought in. The Cliffs of Moher, which you can see behind me, are an awe-inspiring natural wonder on the west coast of Ireland. And they are a testimony to the geological forces that shaped this area. So you can see the limestone layers that were laid down millions of years ago, but then eaten away over millions of years by the force of the Atlantic Ocean. So you see these dramatic, sheer cliff faces that just fall right into the ocean. And it's such a dramatic landscape that it's been used in several different movie productions. Some you may recognize as some of your favorites. You can tell just by looking at the layers that the ocean has carved into these cliffs that things formed a bit differently. This area wasn't seafloor at all, but an ancient delta, kind of like the Mississippi Delta. Now the layers you see are actually ancient mud and silt and sand that got mixed up with marine fossils and washed down from those ancient mountains by massive rivers. The craziest part? Ireland was still sitting right at the equator when all of this was happening. Right at the equator, just right there in tropical, equatorial Ireland. That's too many syllables. It's a lot. And in both places, we have fossils to prove it. Irish limestone in those cliffs are packed with fossils of brachiopods, corals, and crinoids, ancient sea creatures that lived when Ireland was a tropical paradise. And these fossils give us a peek into this world that no longer exists. And they tell a story of how dramatically Earth's environments can change over time. But those fossils, they aren't the only clue to Ireland's long journey north. How do we know for sure that Ireland traveled so far? Two words. Ancient magnetism. By studying the magnetic minerals in ancient rocks, scientists can figure out where landmass was located when that rock was formed. And so over time, as plates have moved, these minerals recorded changes in the Earth's magnetic field, kind of like a built-in tracking system for deep time. Wait, so rocks have prehistoric GPS now? 
That's amazing. Apple's going way too fast for me to track. <laughs> Find my lost continent. Kai, do you hear my continent? I lost it. Earthquake. I lost it. Oh, oh, there's my continent. It's in my purse. It's right there. With That's my where phone. your phone was. <laughs> I know, with my phone, always. But we still haven't answered the question, how did Ireland move so far from the equator? For that, we need to follow young Kai on an imaginative journey underground. You may not feel it, but underneath your feet, there are huge tectonic plates that are like puzzle pieces floating on the mantle of the earth. They're always shifting, bumping, banging, booming, bonking ah! into each other all the time. And that explains how Ireland moved all the way from the equator to where it is now. The Earth's lithosphere, this is the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle, that's fractured into several large and many smaller plates. Now the movement of these plates is driven by convection currents in Earth's mantle. So hot material rises, it cools, it sinks back down again, and that creates currents that drag the plates along for the ride. So, about 450 million years ago, this part of Northwest Ireland was actually part of Laurentia, which is currently North America. And the rest of Ireland was on a different tectonic plate. Now, about 400 million years ago, those two plates started colliding and building the Caledonian Mountains. And then, about 350 to 300 million years ago, the whole kit and caboodle just started moving north from the equator to eventually end up in its current position where we visit it today. But even more amazing, Ireland's not done yet. Plate tectonics are still changing things as we speak. The Atlantic Ocean is widening, meaning that in millions of years, Ireland's position will shift even more. Ireland's geological journey is incredible and ongoing, shaping the landscape everyone loves to visit today and the stories that people tell about this magical place. Ah, oh, the stories, like the tale of the warring giants that created a mythical land bridge made from 40,000 hexagonal basalt columns. A story that perfectly combines myth with science for you, right here. Hey, you. Who are you? Who are you?